In our last video, we looked at if it was possible to use every single edge. This video, we're going to look at the question, can we visit every single vertex? When we visit each vertex, those are called Hamiltonian circuits. Where we visit each vertex once. No repeats. And of course, because it's a circuit, we have to make sure that we start and end at the same vertex. The problem with Hamiltonian circuits is that there is no simple algorithm to find the best option. One thing we could do is what's called the brute force algorithm. And that says, OK, we're going to go through and we're going to list all the options and find weight. But um, a graph with just six vertices has 60 possibilities. And so we'd have to list all 60 of those possibilities, and then we'd have to find the weight of all 60, and then we'd have to decide which one's the best. And that is really a pain. So I'm not even going to do an example of brute force because it just takes way too much time. It's not efficient. So instead of finding the optimal uh, Hamiltonian circuit that has the smallest weight, instead of optimal algorithms, which would get us the correct, cheapest, smallest weight path or circuit, we will use heuristic algorithms. that are efficient so that we can actually do them in a reasonable amount of time and close to the optimal path or circuit, depending on what we're working on finding. So these algorithms that we're going to discuss probably won't give us the best option, but they definitely will give us a good option that we can use to complete our Hamiltonian circuit. We're going to cover three of them in this video. The first is called the nearest neighbor algorithm. And the idea of the nearest neighbor algorithm the process that we're going to go through is first we select a starting point, then we're going to move to the nearest unused vertex. And by nearest, I mean the one that has the smallest weight. And then we're going to repeat this process until the circuit is complete. So let's do an example of the nearest 
neighbor algorithm. Let's do our little triangle with a center point. We've got A, B, C, and D is the center point. And let's give weights of 4, 1, 2, 9, 8, and 13. Now we need to pick a starting point. Doesn't matter which starting point we pick according to the nearest neighbor algorithm. We just select one. So let's start at A. From A, the nearest neighbor, the smallest weight is to go down to point D. So the nearest is D with only a weight of 1. From D, the nearest neighbor with the smallest weight between 8 and 9 is going to be the 8. So now our nearest is C with a weight of 8. Now, technically, the nearest uh, neighbor is A with just a weight of 2, but we've already been to A. It's a used vertex. So our nearest unused vertex is going to be B, the only one we haven't visited yet, which is a weight of 13. And now the only vertex we haven't been to, or actually we've been to all the vertexes, so we just have to complete it going back to A to complete our circuit, which uses a weight of 4. And if we add those weights together, 1 plus 8 plus 13 plus 4, we get 26. And so it seems our nearest neighbor algorithm has produced a path from A to D to C to B to A with a weight of 26. However, the problem with the nearest neighbor algorithm is 26 is probably not the most efficient number. It's considered a greedy algorithm because our very first move was to move from A to D with a weight of 1 because I'm greedy and saw that little number and decided to take the little number, even though later it caused me to use the big number of 13, which quite possibly slowed me down in my total weight. So we're going to attempt to fix this greedy algorithm by saying, instead of starting at A, let's consider we could have started at any point and done the same thing. This is what's called the repeated nearest neighbor algorithm. And its process is really quite similar to the repeated neighbor algorithm. In fact, we're going to do the nearest neighbor algorithm. for each vertex. And then we can select the smallest weight. So going back to our example to see how that would have changed things, our example looked like this. where we had A, B, C, and D in the middle, weights of 4, 1, 2, 9, 8, and 13. And we already said if we started at A, we'd go D, C, B, A. And doing that gave us weights of 1 plus 8 plus 13 plus 4 equals 26. So that was going from A to D to C, to B, and back to A. But let's try a different one. Let's start at B and see what starting at B does. 
Going from B, the nearest neighborhood would be to go up to A. That gives us a weight of 4. From A, the nearest neighbor is D. That would give us a weight of 1 more. From D, the nearest neighbor is C. That would give us 8 more. And then we have to go back to B to complete our circuit, which gives us 4, which gives us 13 more for a total of 26. And as you notice, that actually generated the exact same graph, just starting at a different point, but we covered the exact same path. So it's not really any more efficient because it is the same path. So let's see if starting at C gives us a better result. Starting at C, the nearest neighbor is A. That gives us a weight of 2. This is already a new path. We've never taken that route. Now our nearest neighbor is D with a path of, with a distance of 1. We don't want to go back to C because that would cut off our last vertex. So we have to go down the 9, going to B. So we've got 2 plus 1 plus 9 now. And then we complete by going back to C, which gives us a weight of 13. And if you notice, 2 plus 1 plus 9 plus 13 equals 25. We're slightly more efficient if we start at C. So C might be a better starting point. We still haven't looked at what happens if we start at D in the center. Starting at D in the center, we go up to A. That gives us a weight of 1. Next cheapest option is to go down to C giving us a weight of 2. We can't go back to D now because that would cut off B. So we're going to go from C to B, which gives us a weight of 13. And now we can complete by closing it at a weight of 9, going back to D. And you notice there's a lot of colors in there now. But if you look closely, the red and the purple lines are exactly the same. So we again end up with a weight of 25. Those are both really the same path. Similar to the first options were the same path. They just have different starting points. They might go the opposite direction, but you're really covering the same vertices in the same order. So if we're going to identify our most efficient option, we could choose either the one starting with C or the one starting with D. We could say C, A, D, B, C is our shortest path with a weight of 25. You could also choose the other one. It's exactly equivalent. It just goes backwards, D, A, C, B, D with a weight of 25. That would be just fine as well. So that's the repeated nearest neighbor algorithm. It still is a little greedy because we're still going for that closest one without long-term thought in mind. But it might be a little bit better because we're at least going to start at the best vertex to complete our circuit. However, there's a third option that we haven't discussed. What if instead of focusing on the vertices, let's focus on the edges using what's called the sorted edges algorithm that does the opposite. It focuses on the edges, not the vertices. The process here says we're going to select the cheapest unused edge. Then we will select the next cheapest unused edge, unless there's a few exceptions. If adding the edge 
creates a circuit without all the vertices. Or if adding the edge creates a vertex of degree 3. Because remember, with circuits, we cannot have degree 3 odd degree vertices. So let's try an example using the shorted edges algorithm in this process. We'll stick with that same shape we've been using this whole time. with weights of 4, 1, and 2, 9, and 8, and 13. And we named it A, B, C, with D in the middle. And as I look at this overall shape, the cheapest edge is the 1. So the cheapest edge is AD. Once that 1 is claimed, now the cheapest edge is the 2 between A and C. Now, technically, the next cheapest is the 4. But I want to note that AB would make A have degree 3. We would have three yellow lines coming out of A, so we can't use A, B. So our next cheapest looks like it's C, D. But the problem with C, D is you notice if I highlighted C, D, we would create a circuit that does not include B. We would have a connection A, D, C back to A. So we note C, D would make a circuit without B. So we're not going to use DC either, which means now our cheapest option is BD. And we can complete the circuit with the only remaining line, BC. And we have our sorted edges circuit completed, which may not be the most efficient, but at least it's better than brute force. And I can pick any letter to start at. Let's just start at A because it's first alphabetically. And we can go either direction. I'm going to go to the right. So A, C, B, D, and back to A, which has a weight of 2 plus 13 plus 9 plus 1, which you see is a weight of 25, which I guess 25 is good. It's better than the 26 we got in the nearest neighbor algorithm. Ties actually is the same path that we got with the repeated nearest neighbor algorithm. It's still not optimal. But it's often better. So in this video, we've taken a look at three ways to complete a Hamiltonian circuit that visits each vertex. We talked about first the nearest neighbor algorithm. Then we made it a bit better by doing a repeated nearest neighbor algorithm. And finally, we looked at the sorted edges algorithm, focusing on the edges, which might be a little more efficient. So now it's your turn to practice some of these. And in our next video, we'll take a look at how we can connect vertices so everything's connected, not necessarily with the circuit, but that everything is connected and there's a way to get from every point to every point.